So in this video, I want to talk about the latching circuit that's used to control this contactor. So the components of the circuit are the contactor itself and its auxiliary contact, which is bolted to the side of it, and then this 24 volt DC power supply. And then on the door itself is the on and off switch. If we look on it from the outside, uh, it's composed of two momentary buttons, a red one and a green one. And so the state of the switch is only changing when you're pressing. When you let go, uh, it returns to its normal state. And so these are uh, these switches tend to be modular, so you'll just buy, uh, usually buy this part, which is contiguous with the, the front panel, and then these switches are actually modular. And so you have to specify how many you want and what kind. And they're, they're also stackable, so you could do several of them. So anyway, I have one normally open and one normally closed version here. And then down here is the e-stop switch that I have on the panel. And as you can see, it uses the same type of terminal uh, switch uh, as the on-off switch. And so on my machine, I have one e-stop on the enclosure itself and then two more on the machine. And so I think it'll be easier to show you the uh, connections uh, using a wiring diagram. So let's take a look at that. So here we are in a piece of software called KiCad, K-I-C-A-D. I'll put a link down below. Uh, it's basically software that's used to design circuit boards, but I've used it within my machine to draw the schematic of the controller. Um, it's pretty nice. It has a sort of library of uh, common symbols, and it allows you to create your own custom ones as well. So it's pretty useful. Um, so here I've just drawn out all of the components of the latching circuit and so this symbol up here is uh, just a battery but it's going to symbolize the uh, DC power supply and then this guy here is the switch and the top part of it here is the normally open or the green side of the switch and this bottom part is the uh, normally closed and or red part of the on off switch. And then this thing over on the right is the contactor itself. So we see that, you know, when the contactors close, uh, pin one and two have continuity, pin three and four, and pin five and six. And then 53 and 54 are the pins for the auxiliary contact. And in this particular case, it's the normally open contact. Uh, if you remember, the contactor actually has both sets. It has a normally open and a normally closed set of contacts. So we're just using the normally open ones here. And then up top here, this is actually the, the coil. Uh, and so this, when you power this, it actually changes the state of the uh, contactor from off to on. And so anyway, let's, um, let's get started wiring this thing up. So I'm just gonna wire some wires here and uh, get going. And so we come off the positive uh, side of the power supply and we're going to come down here to pin number three and that's on the switch uh, and then when we come out of uh, the switch we'll come down and actually loop around um, and then we're going to go back to this pin um, pin one and so we actually the power is coming through and then looping back through the normally closed part of the circuit and then when we come out of that, we actually go straight to our uh, e-stop switches. And so I've just written two here. I actually have three in my system, but you could have as many as you wanted, to be honest. It doesn't matter. They all get wired in series here. And then this wire uh, returns back to the coil itself. And then from the coil, we just head up to back to the battery. And so I hope you can see here that when you press the button, uh, power would then flow through this circuit, through the closed e-stops, through the coil, and then turn on the contactor. And uh, if you can see here, it will actually turn on this contactor. This normally closed contact will be pushed and close, and so you'll have continuity between 53 and 54. That's going to be useful in a second. And so if you remember, these buttons are momentary. So if we just left the circuit like this, when you let up on this green button, uh, the 
current would stop flowing and the contactor would then open again. Well, that's not very useful. <laughs> uh, so, and it's all not what we would call latching. So the whole latching is that once the power is on, it stays on. So let's take a look at what changes to the circuit we need to keep this power on. So we want to keep the contact closed after the green button is released. So we're going to need to add another path for current to flow through the coil. And so in order to do that, I'm going to take power from the positive side of the power supply and come to pin 54. And then out of pin 53, we're going to go back to the switch here on pin 1. And so this is going to provide a, a second route for current to flow. So let's take a look at that. So in this version of the circuit, when you press the green button, the contactor's coil gets powered the same way as it did the first time. The only thing different is when the contactor closes, it takes that auxiliary contact with it and thus provides a second route for power to go through the coil. So when we let up on the green button, the power to the coil stays intact and thus the contactor remains closed or as we call it latched and so the uh, contactor will stay closed until you either press the red button or either of the uh, e-stop switches they do the same thing they just break the current going through the coil and thus the contactor will open and turn off power to the rest of your machine so that's it for this video um, I think when you lay it out, it's not all that complicated a latching circuit, but it's uh, pretty important uh, for the safety of your machine. And so um, something I didn't really go into is obviously you got to test that circuit once you've, once you've built it. And so it's important that you test it and it's working the way you want it to. Um, so I hope this was helpful to somebody. Uh, thanks for watching.